Hey, everybody. We are wrapping up our series on colonization in the Americas. And just as a quick review, I want you to review the slide and take a look at the conflict that is happening in the Chesapeake region between Native Americans and European settlers. And as you can see, there are quite a number of battles, quite a number of wars and attacks that are going on. And this obviously this is going to lead to much later conflict with the formation of the USA. All right, so we're going to move on. And we've been talking about Spanish colonies, Portuguese colonies, and British colonies, and a little, a little bit of Dutch here and there. But now we're going to talk about the French colonies, focusing on New France between the years 1608 and 1754. The French explored North America. They were looking for a water route to, to the markets of Asia. And the capital of New France was established at Quebec. French fur traders went beyond the colonial boundaries up the St. Lawrence River into the Great Lakes. And the reason for this is driven by the fur, tr the fur trade, specifically beaver fur. And this results in almost the total depletion in some areas of beaver and then the dramatic dropping of the deer population because people have to eat, hunting goes up. It made Amerindians dependent upon European goods. So this isn't good for anybody. French fur traders lived far from other European settlers. And as a result, they would marry Amerindians and create um, by, by ethnic children. But then when they went back to France, they would leave this family behind because they would eventually come back. And this is kind of similar to what was happening in the Indian Ocean system where merchants would have anywhere from one to three wives in different locations. Whoops, sorry. I don't know what happened there. Um, in the St. Lawrence region, the French allied themselves with the Huron. And the Huron were devastated by diseases brought from Europe, especially smallpox. Fur trading with the Europeans exhausted traditional hunting grounds, and the settlers moved to the Quebec area because of farmland. Patterns of French settlement closely resembled areas to those of Spain and Portugal. The French were committed to missionary work, and they emphasized the extraction of natural resources, only unlike Spain and Portugal, which is focusing on silver, the French are focusing on fur. By 1750, there were approximately 50,000 French settlers. The fur trade provided Amerindians with firearms, which increased the violence of the wars that they fought over control of hunting grounds. Catholic missionaries, including the Jesuits, attempted to convert Amerindian population of French America, but they met with quite a bit of resistance. And as a result, they turned their attention to work in the French settlements. And these settlements were dependent on the fur trade. They were small and they grew slowly. This pattern of settlement allowed Amerindians in French America to preserve a greater degree of independence than they could in Spanish, Portuguese, or the British colonies. The French expanded aggressively to the West and the South, establishing a second fur trading colony in Louisiana in 1699. This expansion led to a war with England, and we know this as the French-Indian War and the Seven Years' War in which the French, who were defeated in 1759, were forced to yield Canada to the English and to cede Louisiana to Spain. And you've already seen this. Um, 1755, territorial claims. Take a look at what the British have compared to the French. And then after that war where they're defeated, by, six, by 1763... This is all in British control. And then this is all in Spanish control. And you're perhaps you're asking, okay, well, where is any French control? If you look here, San Domingo, we will talk quite a bit about San Domingo in our next unit. Specifically, when we're focusing on revolutions, the Haitian Revolution. So they lose pretty much everything in this war. Imperial reforms in Spanish America and Brazil. After 1713, Spain's new dynasty undertook a series of administrative reforms, including expanded intercolonial trade, new commercial monopolies on certain goods, a stronger navy, and better policing of trade and contraband of the Spanish colonies. The 18th century was one of remarkable economic expansion in the Spanish colonies. 
However, threatened by the independence and power of Jesuit influence, both the Portuguese and Spanish monarchies expelled them from their American colonies. The policies of the Spanish led to really a growing sense of grievance among the colonists. The new monopolies aroused opposition from Creole elites, whose only gain from the reforms was their role as leaders of militias that were intended to counter the threat of war with England. And that's pretty much it. And these policies were also a factor in the Amerindian uprisings, including one that was, re- that was led by a Peruvian Amerindian leader who went by Tupac Amaru II. The rebellion was suppressed after more than two years. It cost the Spanish colonies over 100,000 lives, as well as an enormous amount of property damage. Brazil also underwent a period of economic expansion and administrative reform in the 1700s. Economic expansion was fueled by gold, diamonds, cotton, and coffee, and it underwrote the Pombo reforms paid for by the importation of nearly 2 million African slaves. It also underwrote a new wave of British imports. And just in case you're wondering, what are the Pombo reforms? Well, Pombo revised policies towards Indians during his administration. He believed that whites and Amerindians should mingle. And he also encouraged marriage between the two, particularly between white men and Amerindian women. And he encouraged this by giving men access to public offices. And the whole point of this was to integrate the two societies. But let's be honest here. Specifically, it was to integrate Amerindians into white society. And the Jesuit villages were converted into parishes or even small towns called villas. In the north and the west of the country, immigration and settlement were also promoted in southern Brazil by the Azarian tribe. And in Rio Grande de Sao Pedro and Santa Catarina. Vagrants in the captaincy of Sao Paulo were ordered to settle in towns, and Indian villages were dealt in which the same way as those of the northern regions. And when these reforms and these policies made by Pombo are completely revised, you are going to have quite a bit of resentment, because in response, Pombo decides to promote settlement in the unoccupied north and west of Brazil. And all of these military and diplomatic operations, he sees them as problematic. But after he is no longer in charge, all of the reforms are pretty much taken away. Settlers from the Azores and Madeira Islands were given assistance in order to populate and labor in the north and west of Brazil because they were really unexploited regions. New towns were planned. And they were created in the hinterland. So Pombo did quite a bit to try and... You got to remember, given the times, he's doing his best to try and create a peaceful and harmonious society. And while he is completely disregarding the culture of the Indians in an attempt to integrate them into white culture, that is something radical. He's actually treating them like people. He's treating them as second-class citizens, but his goal is to have a more peaceful society. And as soon as, like I said before, as soon as he's gone, the reforms are also gone. And you have the Amerindians who are once again being treated as less than humans, being enslaved. Unfortunately, that is a trend that will continue for hundreds of years. All right, so in conclusion... Take a moment to review this, guys. Amerindians in the colonies of all these European powers, the Spanish, Portuguese, French, and English, all experienced European subjugation, as well as catastrophic effects of exposure to European diseases. Of the Catholic powers, Spain gained the most wealth. They developed a very centralized control with the vice royalties. British colonial governments were more likely to develop according to local interests than the French, Spanish, and Portuguese. And guys, I really want you to remember this, that the British colonial governments were there uh, within the colonies. There were small local governments who really couldn't make big decisions, but they did have some say over what would happen within the towns and cities. And that's going to play a really important role when we start talking about the revolution and the formations of new countries, specifically 
the USA as opposed to new nation states in South America. One reason why North America had better success at first doing this is because they had had experience. The colonists had experience running small governments. The colonies in South America were not allowed to do this, and they would be severely punished if the Spanish or Portuguese crown caught them doing this. So when they finally gain independence from the European powers, they don't have that experience. Please remember that. Keep that in mind. Write that down. Put it on a sticky note and hang it up on your wall somewhere. British colonies welcomed a larger influence of European migrations than any other New World colony. Also very important because that's going to be an issue later when the U.S. is trying to form one nation. You have a lot of diversity. So it's going to it's not going to be unified by, oh, we're all one country. It's going to be unified by our government. So keep that in mind as well as opposed to colonies in South America, where you do have that unity based on culture. All European colonies were designed to be mercantilist. Keep that in mind. And notice the difference of the American farms. You've got New England self-sustaining farms as opposed to Carolinas and Virginia. You've got quite the large plantation system. That'll be important too when we start talking about the Civil War and the difference between the Northern and the Southern states. So... Any questions, you know you can email me. Happy to help. And as always, have a great day, guys. Cheers.